agriculture sector has changed dramatically over the past hundred years. I wanted to know how these changes have shaped our current food system. I wanted to understand the buzz around the organic food movement. What's a GMO? And what's the impact on society of a food system that's driven by money? Canada is the fifth largest exporter of food in the world, yet 30% of the growing population is malnourished. Farming experts say genetic engineering is the solution to feed everyone, still millions of pounds of food are thrown away every day. After talking with agriculture experts, I found that they all have the same goal. They want society to be well nourished, but they have different approaches on how to do it. There's a confusion about selective breeding and natural genetic modification, which is taking a piece of DNA and putting it into the other DNA. We've been breeding plants for thousands of years, and, and most people aren't opposed necessarily to say kind of the natural breeding that goes on where, where pollen from certain plants will fertilize another plant. Scientists change the DNA of the plant to make it less attractive to pests and weeds. This thing that's toxic to this pest and if we put these together then we don't have to spray everybody else. We just know that if that pest bites this piece of fruit it's going to die. Four GMO crops are currently allowed in Canada. Soy, corn, sugar beets, and canola. Most plants at the supermarket have been modified to make it shinier or bigger, but they aren't actually GMOs. There are 13 ways to modify a plant, and only five of them produce what's known as a GMO. Dr. Igor Kovalchuk works to produce GMO cannabis for commercial production. He uses one of the five methods that produce GMOs. He calls it transgenics, which means he injects DNA from foreign species into the marijuana plant. Transgenic approach is uh, a precise approach, right? So we're not doing things randomly. We know precisely what we're introducing, right? So we can actually, nowadays, very quickly and easily sequence the genome. In general, genetic modification is said to be safe and beneficial. You can take a trait from something from like a, a variety of, of wheat that's grown on a coastal region and may have certain types of resistance and uh, traits built in, and then you can breed it with something that's maybe grown in like a really arid type area, and then you can get uh, traits for drought tolerance. And so when you breed the two, which will pretty much never happen naturally, you, you get uh, kind of, you can find plants that maybe exhibit the best of both worlds, right? He explained that he's giving an example of crossbreeding two types of wheat. All of these ways of creating plant variations fall under what the government calls novel foods or GMs. The science behind genetic engineering is going to make it possible for us to be able to meet that global demand. If it's done responsibly, right, and I believe that scientists in Canada, I know regulations very well, do it very responsibly. Health Canada says the government uses scientists with specialized expertise to analyze the data that determines their regulations on GMOs. I asked where this data comes from and found out they're provided by the product developers themselves. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency follows the same method of retrieving data when they test the safety of chemicals used to manage pests and weeds. One of the biggest things that we in general agriculture have lost, especially in the last 60, 80 years, is that we've gone to uh, production and we've lost the um, nutrient dense value of our food. We've lost the quality end of it and we're really here, we're just being big commodity producers in the general picture. In an agricultural setting, when we're producing food, we're asking the ecosystem to provide a service. So it's not a function, so there's a difference there between functions and services. And we're putting limits on what we want the soil to do. So we're saying, soil, I want 10,000 bags of canola, whatever. Now we have to make sure the soil has the capacity to do that. And we're running into a problem now where, you know, for a long time it was physical manipulation. So we tilled, the soil got old, it didn't work, we went to another field and we tilled that, right? And then we got the green revolution, so we, we tilled the heck out of it. Now, green revolution, we can add fertilizers and we can grow crops. Awesome, great. Now we're at this point where we can't add any more fertilizers because it's not doing anything. So now, what's next?